let me ask you now, when the monkeys came about, now you mentioned Ringo and stuff yeah. and so forth, and that was one of my questions. Now, when the monkeys came out, you guys were so similar to the Beatles and so forth. I mean, was there any controversial there? Did you, when you guys first make the Beatles, was there anything dissension there? I mean, uh, you guys are so similar and becoming so big at the same time. Can you tell us about that? John Lennon said, the monkeys are nothing like the Beatles. They're more like the Marx Brothers. <laughs> And, you know, they were all friends. I know them all, met them all. I've got tape, Mickey Donalds has got tapes of George Harrison, Paul McCartney, Mark Bolan, you know, Mark Bolan, T-Rex, yes. um, Harry Nielsen, 16, 16 millimeter meter tapes in his little studio in his basement, jamming away, you know, having a smoke and, you know, whatever else is going on, having a good time, loads of tapes, night after night after night when they were in town, whatever. Um, the Beatles... Obviously, we've all been great fans, and every time I hear them now, I go to a pub now in Richmond, um, Virginia. It's called Penny Lane. It's owned by um, uh, a guy called Terry from Liverpool. It's monk. Uh, Beatles are playing over and over and over, every Beatle record you've ever heard. And as I was leaving the pub a couple of days ago, um, I walked out and um, and uh, with a friend, and uh, Penny Lane, there is a barber. And I went, woo. I said, I can't leave. I've got to stand here. And I stood outside the building and listened to Penny Lane because the first time I ever heard it, I played it 5,000 times because I just, it was just so nice. To, you know, it was different than everything, and it was like a, 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 a teenage. You see, the, the Beatles, don't get this wrong. The Beatles were the first manufactured group, not the Monkees. It was the Beatles. Brian Epstein dumped uh, Pete Best. I played with Pete a couple of months ago. Um, and it, they dumped Pete. They brought in Ringo. I don't know what, whether the dissension between John and Pete, whatever it was, there was something going on. Anyway, I didn't know anything about any of that. And they, they dressed them in the same suits, and they put the Cabezio shoes on, you know, with the boots on. They, 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 actually, there were Oliver boots that we used on the Oliver stage. They had the little Oliver haircut, like a little, you know, like a little beetle bowl cut. And they put, presented them all the same way. J j uh, j um, Paul was playing this way, John was playing this way. Ringo was doing his thing, throwing his hair around. And George was an amazing musician, totally over underrated. Totally, I have a tape of them together. Uh, Ringo couldn't be at this um, meeting. And so George and, and John and, and Paul are talking. And um, uh, they're saying to, you know, uh, I think John or Paul said, you know, um, um, well, you know, we're the ones who write the songs, you know. And George said, well, you know, I have been enjoyed. And I just love that. Yeah. I have been enjoyed, you know, something in the way she moves, you know, My Sweet Lord, all these great tunes that he wrote. Amazing, amazing songwriter, uh, you know, in a different vein than those boys were. My most disappointing thing about the Beatles over the last couple of years is when Paul decided he wanted to change um, a song title that he had written with John to McCartney and Lennon. It's sort of like, you know, Hammerstein and Rogers, you know. I mean, it sort of like diluted a little bit for me there, sunning. Uh, but then, uh, you know, y you know, you can't really, you know, in a in a in a in a in a world of no's, they got a lot of yeses and they're still getting them. So that's not a negative side. It's just an opinion, something that I felt about. You know, it's sort of like um, it affected me deeply when John Lennon was 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 shot. You know, it affected me very deeply. Same as when my father died, it affected me very deeply. My father died in '68. You know, it changed my life. My mum died in 1960. I was 14 years old. I figured, you know, my daughter, my sister was getting married and they were moving away. The first thing I did was scrap the woodwork and the metalwork. I went to the cookery class with the girls. Hello. And I learned to cook. I learned to, to you know, to be able to look after myself. My dad worked all day. I, you know, as I say, uh, um, it's, it's not been an easy um, um, life, but it isn't for anybody. And I've been able to take advantage and take, you know, benefits that other people will never be able to take.